Hi guys, welcome to video number 3 of this tutorial series. Now in this video, I will talk about how you can get started with CodeShare. So without any further ado, let's get started. So first of all, we need to create an account in CodeChef, right? So let's go to CodeChef.com. Now you will be able to see a screen like this. Now I will be logging in with uh, my Google account. So you can you have op other options also like uh, you can log in with sign up or log in with Google. You can sign up with GitHub or Facebook. So anything you can choose. Otherwise you can choose for some username password. But here I will uh, log in with Google. So I will click on this uh, little. I will click on this little uh, red wala Google button. So and. So here you can see this is my uh, Gmail account which is uh, currently active or currently logged in. So I will click on this. For first time setup, it will ask you to enter some username and uh, you know some other descriptions. Username is basically a unique identifier for yourself. You can uh, put it anything, but you have to check whether uh, this is unique or not. So how can we check? We simply can enter here let's say i am entering c2 underscore academy now let's just block this for now now you can see a green tick here over here in the right side that means the username is available now i will click on this i will choose this one I am just opting out for newsletters and uh, I abide by Code Chef's code of conduct. So let's uh, click on this register button. So after registering, you can see here my username appears here, and uh, you can see a screen like this, right? Now, right now I will go through each and every tab here. That is, the first one is a practice and learn. So basically, the first is you can see code compile and run. So this is a kind of an uh, web ID that I showed you in previous video. Here you can actually code online and compile it and uh, you know run your program and test it whether it's working fine or not. Now you have com com compete tab here where uh, you can see all the contests that are there. So you can see all the future contest, all the running contest, and uh, these are the recent contests that you are having, like July Challenge or July Cookup. We will come to this later, but uh, for now you can see like these are the competition that you have as of now. Now in the practice and learn uh, section, you have like uh, practice problems by difficulty level, practice problems by tags. So uh, let's just click on the let's just click on. Uh, this practice problem by difficulty level you know show this kind of a screen where you have uh, these many tabs like beginners easy medium hard challenge peer uh, based on difficulty levels beginners is the easiest and challenge and peer are the you know difficult one most difficult one so we will start with beginner the link over here that is successful submission so how many num that means how many number of people have actually successfully submitted this uh, problem uh, this number is associated with this problem so here you can find a link right so this is a problem link now if i click on successful submission you can see that the you know it has sorted the all the problems in uh, descending order of uh, number of successful submission so i will start with uh, let's say this problem add to numbers so uh, once you click on the problem link you will uh, see this kind of a page where this is the title of the problem add to numbers this is the desk where it says that what is the problem and uh, what you need to do now this is the input section that means whatever what input you will be given now this is the output section which is uh, basically uh, saying that what kind of output they are expecting from your program now these are the constraints that means uh, like whatever integer let's say here you can see the first line contains an integer t so what can be the value of t so this is a range for that so this is this is called constraints 
Now here they have given an example input and output like if they have given inputs like this uh, you are supposed to output like this. So we will get to know like how this output is getting generated after reading the problem. But uh, for now let's say uh, this is a problem statement. Now this is a tab here my summation if you click on this get to see a page like this where uh, it's written like no recent activity because I haven't submitted any solution for this problem yet. Once I submit a solution, I will show you, uh, you know, the submission history will appear here. Let's get back to the problem. All submissions means uh, that uh, there are many users in CoreShep. Now, whoever has submitted for this problem, you can see uh, their solutions Whenever you are participating on a contest, you will not be able to see the you will not be able to see their code uh, while the contest is running. After the contest, you can see. So this is a good way of learning by looking at others' code. Now let's say you have read the problem statement and uh, your and your program is working fine. Now you need to submit uh, your program, right? So in order to submit your program, you need to click on this submit button. There is another button over here in the top. You can click on this also. It's the same. You will get to see this kind of ID over here. So here is a choice of programming language. So this is some sample code given by CodeShare. You can delete it and uh, paste your code over here. Now, once you are done with uh, coding, now what you can do is basically you can, uh, you know, this is that this is a checkbox of custom input. That means you will you can uh, input uh, you can uh, you know insert custom inputs over here. If you don't want to insert custom inputs, you can simply run it. That will uh, basically run your program on some test cases given by CodeShev itself. Now this submit button. So once you submit this, uh, let's say once you submit this uh, problem, so it will evaluate your code uh, based on some test cases. Uh, you know more number of test cases and then it will determine whether your code is successful or not right so let's go back to the problem here so what is the problem i will solve uh, one problem for you so what is the problem like so basically this is the code for the problem we saw a few minutes back so what i will do i will put insert some custom input here. input i am inserting and uh, you don't need to bother about what input I'm inserting, where I'm getting those and uh, how I'm writing this code. You don't need to bother about that. We will cover all those things in later videos. But for now, you, I'm just showing you how you can run it. So I have inserted some custom input here and I will click on the run button. What will happen? This is showing like submission queued. This is showing like, like uh, successfully executed and uh, input whatever input I have given and what's the what my program output is. Yeah, so I feel like the uh, code is kind of fine and it's giving right output. So I will go ahead and submit it. So it will ask you whether you want to submit it or not. I will say OK. It's showing uh, submission queued. OK, now you can see here uh, I have correct answer, right? And there is a link to my solution code, right? Now, if you go back to this problem right now, here is a problem code. Here is a link also. So, you page now and uh, click on my submission. You can see I have user C2 Academy and uh, you can see a submission here. So, if you click on the view button, then you get to see your how you can submit a solution in CodeShop, right? So, uh, in future videos, we will be solving a lot of problems from CodeShip. So it's better that you create a account in CodeShip and uh, continue with the tutorial series. So that's it for today. I hope you liked the video. If you have liked the video, then uh, do hit the like button and uh, tell me in the comment section and also subscribe to my channel if you haven't done already.